my name is Ewan and I am a, a research assistant for the National Capricaley Survey. So I'm going to walk two kilometres of woodland uh, along a triangular path and if I see any Capricaley, I'm going to make a note of it. I'm going to stick to the line that is marked as that triangle drawn on the map there as close as possible. It can mean wading through knee-deep heather or, or higher. It can mean uh, negotiating through, through trees and, and bushes and other vegetation. So it's important to pause because sometimes the capercaillie are not going to flush out the tree immediately. Um, they're much more likely to flush if I pause and stop. So it enables me to be more certain of picking up any capercaillie that are actually in the area. You know, if they don't flush, I could easily walk right past it without seeing it. So by pausing, uh, that makes them more likely to actually take note of my presence and, and flush, which is where I can spot them and, and record that they're there. I just find this feather. I'm pretty sure it's a hen capercaillie feather. I can't believe you spotted that. Do, do you get an eye in for things? Definitely get an eye in. Um, I'm trying to, most of my focus is on the trees, looking for the actual birds, because that's the most important thing to spot. But I just pick up things that are on the ground, you know, um, it's useful information to know that these are there, and I'm just looking for interesting things anyway, you know, and it's, it's useful to, to, to notice that these are there. You just get your eye in for them. What was that? That was a cock capricaini. Very nice looking meal. Just flashed out of this pine tree over here. I'm happy. <laughs> it's made by day. Now to the science bit of recording where it was and what it was. Hello, I'm Stephen. I'm filming this piece. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that capper in that shot. So just in case, Here's one an expert natural history cameraman prepared earlier. It's very important to get an accurate um, measurement of where it was and how, how far away it was uh, so that, that all that information it gives an accurate estimate of the population. It's a thrill to see one, for sure. We're seeing, on average, one every 18, 20 kilometres that we've walked through the woods so far, roughly. You know, if there's no Capricornia, that's still useful information. That's still important information. Um, we're not going to places where we know there's Capricornia because that, would that wouldn't produce accurate results. So it's really important that we do spend that time walking through woods and not seeing anything as well. We are mindful of the, the disturbance that we are causing to the birds. And we don't go out when conditions are too extreme. If it's too cold, if there's too much snow, um, then we stay at home um, and let the capricorn just get on with surviving. In this case, the disturbance that we're causing, we think is outweighed by the benefit to the Capricorn population from us knowing how many there are, where they are, and informing the management. Now that I know where they all are, I'm not going out in my spare time and chasing after them. You know, it's important for me that I let them be that I've come into their world, into their home and, and disturbed them, that I then go away and 
and give them a bit of peace and quiet again afterwards.